Hey guys, Ego Breaker here. Um, wanted to do this video. There's been a lot of talk about um, e emotion shocks, how to build emotion shocks on RC Tech in the uh, Techno Forum. Um, I wanted to do a video on how I do my emulsion shocks and the parts that I use as well. Um, this will be for Techno SCTE 410s and EB48s. Um, the, it'll all work exactly the same. Um, as you see, I got my shock body and it's got an O ring here at the bottom of the threads for the bottom of the shock. You've got the bottom shock cap. Uh, some of you may use the aluminum ones. I still use the plastic ones. Um, these two plastic little o-ring type dills go in the bottom, the bottom of the shock here uh, between the o-rings. These o-rings over here two of them for each shock, each shock. This actually goes in the cap into the bottom of the cap like this. Um, these are the stock ones that actually came with um, the truck. It's a shaft guide. I am actually going to be upgrading to these. Let's get my camera to focus here. Uh, you might not be able to tell, but these are a little bit thicker. They're the ones that come from the EB48, so I will actually be upgrading those. I will also be upgrading to these aluminum shock collars. All right. As for the build, um, you see this towel here. It is a microfiber towel. I use that to. You know, stand my shocks upside down, let a lot of the oil run out of the shock. Then I also use it to use one to clean the threads. I will take a corner of it and go inside the bottom of the body, try to clean out as much oil as possible. And then I also go inside the shock body. I try to use a clean towel um, to do this. I get these at Costco for pretty cheap. Uh, I want to say there's like a hundred of these in a bag for I think like 10 or 12 bucks. So it's no big deal to throw them away. And that's pretty clean. You can see some of the dirt that I picked up on the rag just from cleaning. Clean all the threads. I also wipe off the shock shaft. I will actually wipe off the shock piston. This o-ring is the o-ring I use to go inside the cap. I will wipe this off. I just like to start with a fresh clean slate every time I rebuild shocks. These are my plastic caps for emulsion. You might not be able to see, but right here there's a hole. That is my emulsion bleeder hole that I drilled from this top hole. Just drilled straight down into the cap to make this that little hole. Okay? For bleeding. Alright, now what I do is is you put one of the plastic spacers in 
first. And then what I do is, is I actually take an O-ring and some of this uh, green slime. Uh, some people like to use shock oil, which you can do the same thing. Uh, I like the green slime, so that's what I'm going to use. <clears throat> I will squeeze some out onto the shock. And then use my fingers to kind of spread the green slime around the shock. Clean my finger off. And then... Um, I will slide on this bottom piece for the shaft guide. Then I will slide on this o-ring. Then I'll put on another plastic spacer. And with the rest of the green slime on my finger, I then slide on another o-ring. So then that's kind of what it looks like when it goes in the shock body. Now remember you put another one of these plastic spacers in the shock already. So oh. oh I actually did that wrong. Let me fix that. Put the shock cap on the bottom of the shock cap on first, then the spacer, then O ring, then a spacer. And then the other spacer and you put that all into the bottom of the shock make sure everything seats well screw the bottom of the shock on I just screw this on uh, finger tight and then I just kind of move the shaft in and out to check for freeness. Feels pretty free. Okay, now I put my piston in. I don't know if you can see it or not. These are X ray XB9 pistons that I use. Let's see if I can get a focus. Now it's not going to focus very well, but on the flat side of the piston, it actually has two numbers on it. This one has a one and a three. Um, these are a six hole. You can count six hole. Oh, you might be able to see the three, one and three there now. Um, six hole by one three is what that means. That's what I like about the x-ray pistons. They mark the numbers on them. For the size of the piston hole, all the you know six one, six by one two, six by one three, eight by one two, eight by one three, they're all marked on the piston. Now I put it on, put my nut on, and then I tighten it down. It's a five mil nut. Tighten it down. Till it's snug and everything moves freely and clear okay so now I pull the shaft all the way out also you may notice I'm not using any of the um, o-rings on the shock shaft on the outside the, sh the, the limiters um, I don't run those. If you want to run them, you can. There's nothing wrong with them. I just, I don't really like them uh, that much. I'd like to have full stroke of the piston, um, so I don't run them. But now, to fill, I'm going to use low C 30 weight.
I'm actually going to fill just, I don't know, half an inch be below the top. And then I'm going to move the shock piston in and out just to release some of the air bubbles. And then refill again. And move the piston through the stroke maybe one or two times. Make sure all the oil's been released from the bottom. And what you want to do is you actually want to kind of create a little bit of a dome in the oil so that it kind of domes over the top of the piston. I will actually typically let this sit um, for an hour or two make sure it's all bled and everything but for this video I'm just going to go ahead and build it. So that's filled. Now you take your cap and your o-ring. I put my o-ring inside the cap. You want to screw it all the way down. Hand tight. Should be plenty. And take hex driver, two and a half mil. You want to unscrew the bleeder hole screw. And then I take a rag and hold it around the shock body to catch capture the oil. And then you want to slowly move your piston up. And then you'll start seeing oil come out. I don't go all the way up. I go until it's a good stream of oil. As you can see, there's still a little bit of the shock shaft free. Wipe away the excess oil. Screw the screw back in. And if you see, shock kind of shock shaft kind of sucks back up in the shock body after you pump it a few times. I actually feel a little bit of air still in there. As you can see, it won't let me push it all the way up. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to release some pressure. And let some more oil leak out. Now it allows me to push it all the way up. Still sucks the shaft in a little bit. Has a little bit of rebound once the oil starts mixing with the oil. Which you can tune that out if you want. I actually will. As you see now there's 
very little rebound. That is how I build my emulsion shocks. If you have any questions, comments, if you want to share the video, like, please do so. Um, I will be making some more videos here pretty soon on different type of motors. Um, Tekin, four pole motors, a hobby wing motor, um, my Novak motor um, that I use. Um, try to get a couple different motors and do some motor testing with the the Techno short course truck. Um, so stay tuned to that. If you have any questions, feel free to to ask. And that's it. We'll see you guys.